two weeks before the end of the year. Two weeks before I have to revisit the goals I set a year ago and hold myself accountable for the progress I've made. After all, goals are nothing unless you reevaluate them once the deadline's passed. But at this point, I'm not feeling very accomplished. Every step forward feels like two steps back. I fix one thing and another seems to break. And while it's par for the course, this time of year, that's a little frustrating. I'm anxious by nature, and my brain already likes to worry. So this time of year, and knowing I've got to review these goals, doesn't exactly help that stress. In fact, it kind of compounds. Sometimes it feels like I'm rolling a ball up a hill and the incline keeps increasing. There's so much to do and time really does seem to move faster and faster each day. Have I really made progress this year? Am I ready to reevaluate the goals I set? Or are all my cars really as far from being nice as they were before? When it rains, it absolutely pours. This car is making me ask a lot of questions. Why did the battery choose to die this week when I'm already stressed? Will I ever get around to fixing the struts on the trunk? And most pressing, will the spoiler actually hold? Sure, I'm worried about reviewing the goals I had last year, but there's a silver lining. I still have two weeks to make as much progress as possible, so I should probably make the most of it. The best part of a checklist is actually checking something off of it. Once that's done, I don't have to think about it ever again. So with that in mind, if I'd like to feel as good as possible when I review my goals I set last year, I need to check off all the little things that I could accomplish quickly. Otherwise, they're just gonna weigh me down. In other words, that's where I wanted to start. The first task I checked off was the battery. Pretty simple reason why it failed, too. It was made in 2017, so I'm honestly shocked it lasted this long. And as I was putting the battery away, the car gave me all the motivation I would need to figure out what to do next.
And with just a couple minutes of work, I'm already starting to feel better about the state this car is in. What about the actual mechanical issue, though? After all, I left the car with a piece of the charge pipe in need of drastic redesign. A couple days after I placed the order, the new coupler for the charge pipe showed up. The real difference with this one is that it's the right size. The previous one was reused from the old turbo and it doesn't fit well at all. It fits perfectly up by the intercooler, but the actual part that hits the outlet of the turbo is way too big. Hence why we're currently running another piece of silicone as a step down reducer. It's also dirty from the old turbo's blow by. And as we continue to turn the boost up on this car, that is absolutely not going to cut it. The new one, however, fits absolutely perfectly. And at this point, we can redo that third gear pull in order to see if we break anything else, that is. The new silicone piece of our charge pipe holds perfectly. I took the car out for a fun drive, and my whole goal was to basically try and get it to break again. After all, when the car consistently doesn't break, I can start to rely on it. And so far, so good. With the new hose on and the car electrically happy again, it is running and driving better than ever, meaning we can pick up right where we left off. The car needs more fueling. And there's a couple ways we could go when it comes to fueling upgrades. Thankfully though, it's the gift giving time of year. I got these packages from Motozo a while ago, and I figure it's about time we see what's inside. I have a hunch they might be able to help us with our fueling issue. Upgraded fuel pump and some absolutely overkill injectors. In other words, I think we've got all the pieces of the puzzle to give this car way more fuel than it will ever need. And I honestly can't thank them enough. The injectors are so overkill they're going to need a completely revised tune. However, the fuel pump we can install as the car currently sits. Right now, our fuel pump is completely maxed and the car can make about 17 PSI on the new turbo. Our goal is to make a bit more than that, so we're going to need to replace the pump. And this one provides about a 40% increase in flow over the 225 pump. And as our current target is a stable 20 PSI, that sounds like it'll be perfect. Plus, since I recently deleted the rear seats, we're really only a couple clips away from seeing the old fuel pump itself. Either under the stock seat base or under your seat delete is two different metal brackets. These cover two different parts of the fuel tank, and the one we're concerned with is the one with the wires flowing into it. This is where the primary fuel pump sits, and mine was absolutely filthy. So first things first, I gave it a quick clean. And once most of the dust is gone, I went ahead and started disassembling what's on top. There's an electrical connector and two fuel lines. And since they're fuel lines, I was expecting quite a bit of gas to come out when I removed them. This whole assembly is held down with a sort of screw cap. And to remove it, the best way is to use a screwdriver and a mallet or some sort of a chisel to slowly unscrew it. As a prerequisite to this, it's best to do it on a mostly empty tank. Sadly, I mostly forgot about that and I had filled up a couple days earlier. It doesn't really change the install too much other than it's pretty messy. The whole fuel pump hanger assembly is effectively divided into two parts. There's a top half and a bottom half and they are connected. 
all that really holds them in place is a spring and some tension. Sadly, it's not as simple as just pulling both of them straight up. There's a couple things we have to disconnect, and due to clearance, the only way to disconnect them is inside the tank itself. The first of which is this fuel line that goes into the pump, and it sits right on top. A press of the release button and both sides can be removed. Zip tied to that is an electrical connection, and since this is connected to the hose staying in the tank, it also needs to be undone. And the final thing to remove before we can pull the bottom half of the hanger out is a little bracket with a hose attached to it that siphons gas from the other side of the tank. The issue with it, however, is there is no way to remove this bracket without reaching your hand inside the tank itself. It sits right on the side, and all I had to do was reach down, loop my finger around it, and pull it straight up. No screws, no clips, nothing weird, it's just simply reaching down and pulling it up. Really, the most annoying part of this whole deal was the fact that the gasoline was absolutely freezing. But after a couple minutes of finagling, I was able to get the bracket unhooked and bring it up to the top to see what it looks like. These three connections were the only thing keeping the bottom of the hanger in place. And in order to remove the hanger itself, they all need to be back below it. So sadly, that means we're gonna have to go fishing for these later, but the bottom of the hanger does not have clearance with them pulled up. So it's part of the process. As the hangar was filled with gasoline, I let it drain for a couple of minutes before actually taking it outside of the car. But when I did, I could start fishing for those three pieces we disconnected, so I didn't have to worry about it later. Thankfully, they were all pretty easy to get. And some gasoline-resistant gloves helped minimize the smell on my skin later. Not perfect, but a lot better than not wearing any. With the pump, hanger, and assembly outside of the car, we can start to see what we're working with. This piece is called the float, and it does just that. Floats in the gas, telling your car how much fuel there is. And the first step in getting the fuel pump out of this assembly is to remove this piece specifically. And from here, we can start removing both of the hoses. They connect the top and bottom half of this assembly, and the only real way to get the pump out is to have that much clearance. And with the hose disconnected, I was able to pull the pump directly out the top. It's only held in here with a tolerance fit and some O-rings, so it's actually pretty easy to remove. I also took some time to remove the hose off of the old pump since we're going to be reusing it on the new one. And while I'm reusing both of the hoses, I'm not going to be reusing the O-rings. The kit came with all the O-rings and hose clamps needed to replace pretty much the entire system, so we're going to be doing that. And we're going to be using some supplied silicone in order to get them to fit on smoothly. One smaller one goes on the inside bottom of the pump, and two larger ones go on the outside of the pump, top and bottom. One important thing to note about the big one on the bottom is it does not go up all the way. It simply sits on this first lip. The second lip actually has an inlet hole for gas to enter the pump, so blocking it is probably not the best idea. And as far as putting the pump back in the hanger, we need to put it in a specific orientation. Both the hole on the plastic hanger and the hole on the bottom of the pump need to be lined up. So I triple checked this before applying any pressure to actually seat the pump. But once this was done, I installed the new o-ring up top and then reassembled the pump in the exact reverse order as I disassembled it. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of completely submerging my hand in gasoline to find these pieces when I first removed the pump, but they need to be down there in order for the hanger to have enough clearance to slide in. So what I did was tie some long zip ties on there so I could just pull those up instead. And with the hanger back in place, it was really just a matter of reconnecting those three things that we disconnected. I started with the bracket that pushes into place, and sadly there wasn't really a way for me to put that one on without sticking my hand in again, but it went on a lot easier than it came off. 
I also reconnected the electrical harness and the fuel line that goes to the top of the pump. And with both of those in place, I could send the spring-loaded top back to its initial home and start reassembling the cap. At this point, everything was technically ready for me to put the covers back on, but I didn't. I want to make sure that I don't see any major leaks when the pump primes, so the first thing I need to do is prime the pump. I heard the pump turn on and I went back and checked to make sure none of those lines up top were spraying fuel everywhere. And thankfully, we were good to go, meaning we could put this cover back on as well as our seat delete and take the car on its first drive. If it fires up, that is. The car fired up and I started the data log. It was driving better than ever, but how would that third gear wide open throttle pull go? The car pulled smoothly and strongly to redline. From the driver's seat, the car feels healthier than ever, but we won't know for sure until we hear back from the tuner. And in order to hear back from him, we're gonna need to send him the log from the most recent drive. This year has been an absolute roller coaster for this car. And even though the tunnel I'm in is dark at times, I need to focus on the light at the end of it. Rather than letting little things bother me that are completely under my control and easily fixable, I need to look at the bigger picture. After all, life is pretty great. Sure, the TT has a number of things that need fixing, but in all honesty, this car is as good as it ever has been. And even though it may not be quite where I want it, it is fantastically fun. And everything we did to it this week only enhanced it. Plus, the next revision we got from our tuner is gonna turn the car up even more. So I've got a lot to look forward to. Happy holidays, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support me and my channel. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.